that Dursey had been such an absolute cow to their mother had meant that the twins took this as inspiration for coming up with the most gruesome of punishments. another episode of Boring History. My name is Angela and I thought with Halloween just around the corner, why not have a look at some of the more gruesome myths that are out there. I'm sure there's a creative name I could come up with for a series like this, but you know what? For now, let's just get on with the video and hear all about poor old Dursey. Although granted, she did kind of deserve what she got. Alrighty, so once upon a time there was a daughter of a prince called Antiope. Now you may be wondering why is she the daughter of a prince when the usual setup in Greek mythology is that everybody is the daughter of a king. But don't worry, we'll be coming across a king pretty soon. Now Antiope was absolutely stunning. She was the most beautiful woman you could ever imagine. And she had caught the eye of not only the king of the gods, but also the king of the ladies, Zeus. So Zeus did the logical thing and disguised himself as a satyr, who are those half goat looking things that follow Dionysus around, and using that form he seduced Antiope. Maybe she was into goats, who knows. Antiope ends up getting pregnant by Zeus and her father is all like, for shame! And he scares her so much that she ends up running away. However, Antiope's father just can't let it go and he decides that the disgrace is just too much for him and he has no choice but to kill himself. But before he does that, he gives his brother Lycus a call. And remember how I said there would be a king? Well, Lycus is essentially the king of Thebes. Antiope's father asks his brother to avenge him by punishing Antiope for the shame that she has brought to the family. Lycus is all like, yeah, sure, no worries, and Antiope's father goes on to kill himself. Now, in the meantime, Antiope has found refuge with the nice king of Sicyon. Unfortunately, Lycus finds her, kills the nice king and drags her all the way back to Thebes. Along the way she gives birth to twins but they're left out in the wilderness to fend for themselves aka get eaten by wolves. Lycus ends up making Antiope a slave and she mostly has to serve his wife Dursi. Now Dursi is an absolute cow to Antiope because she's jealous of how beautiful she is and she makes Antiope's life a living hell. Antiope gets all depressed because there's not really a lot that she can do about her situation. Or is there? Let's rewind to find out what happened to those twins. Because it turns out a friendly shepherd had found them and raised them as his own. Their names were Amphion and Zethus, which kind of sounds like a weird way of pronouncing Zeus. Both boys had had a pretty good upbringing and they had been allowed to pursue their own individual interests. Zethus had an interest in fighting and battle and the use of force. But he wasn't entirely a brute because he also made sure to learn about agriculture, farming and all that sort of stuff. His brother Amphion was a lover and not a fighter. He'd even been given a lyre by Hermes and had devoted himself to music. Apparently, the two brothers used to fight about whose skills were more useful. The fights were always a bit one-sided because Zethus would just twist Amphion's arm until he agreed with him. Alright, so now we know what's been happening to the sons for the last 18, 20 years or so. Let's go check back in on Antiope. One day when Antiope was just chilling in her little slave quarters or something, the chains and shackles that held her just magically dropped off. And that wasn't even the best part because turns out absolutely nobody was around, which meant that she could literally just walk out of her uncle's house. And she keeps walking until somehow Coincidentally, she ends up at the very cottage where the shepherd and her two sons have been living. The ultimate coincidence. Anyway, she instantly recognises her darling children and after a bit of convincing, they believe her when she says that she is their mother. And then she does the logical, healthy thing and asks her two sons to avenge her for all the pain and suffering that she's been made to endure thanks to Dursey. The twins are like, yeah sure, why not? and they head off to Thebes to find Dursey. Now of course because Dursey had been torturing their mother for the last however many decades, they had absolutely no choice but to kill her. This wasn't something that a little slap on the wrist 
was going to fix. Instead, it was the most gruesome of deaths. While Dursey was still alive, they tied her to the horns of a bull and then sent the bull on its merry way. Now, obviously, the bull would have been annoyed at this thing or this person that was attached to him and he would have been bucking and shaking his head all over the place. And this meant that Dursey was dragged over rocks and other hard and sharp stuff until eventually she was torn to pieces. Congratulating themselves on a job well done, Amphion and Zethus head back to Thebes where they kill Lycus and take over the city. Their mother had been avenged. The end. If you're interested in seeing a representation of this myth in Greek sculpture, you can actually Google the Farnese bull. Or is it the Farnese bull? Anyway, if you're squeamish, don't worry because there's nothing really gruesome about the statue. And if you're thinking that the ending of this story was much too happy to be a gruesome Halloween story, don't worry because after all the dust settled, things took a turn for the worse for Antiope and her sons. It was claimed that because Dursey had been a follower of Dionysus, Dionysus got annoyed that Dursey had been killed in particularly such an aggressive manner and he made Antiope go insane. Kind of like what Hera did to Hercules, although I do think in Antiope's case, the insanity was permanent. The twins didn't fare much better. Actually, I'm not sure what happened to Zethus. But Amphion, after he was married and had some children, he also suffered a fit of madness and went and totally trashed one of Apollo's temples. This seriously pissed off Apollo and Apollo shoots him and he dies. In some versions of the myth, Apollo actually shoots Amphion's entire family. Actually, it's annoying me not knowing what happened to Zethus. Zethus. Give me a second. <laughs> Alright, I'm back. So it turns out Zethus also gets married and has a son. His son dies due to an unfortunate accident and Zethus is absolutely devastated and he ends up committing suicide out of grief. So it turns out absolutely nobody had a happy ending. Except maybe Zeus. And on that note, let's end today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this marvelously gruesome, Halloween worthy Greek meal. Somebody clearly didn't, so I hope at least you did. And maybe you'll consider subscribing because I look forward to sharing even more boring history with you in the future.